Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. So the video topic for today is a question that I receive probably once a week, and that is, what are some good beginner corals? And it's a loaded question because with very few exceptions, I would say that the vast majority of the corals are kind of in this middle ground, this kind of this middle area. If you stay within these lines, most of these corals will do pretty well. So I was thinking a little bit about what really makes a beginner coral a beginner coral. Is it just that they don't die quite so easily? In that case, Mojano anemones would probably make a great selection. Those things are practically unkillable, right? And they actually look pretty. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to give that a go, knock yourself out. Most people often gravitate towards soft corals. And there's a couple of reasons why soft corals kind of come to the forefront. It's because a lot of them are kind of tolerant to some elements of neglect, like some maybe some heightened nutrient levels. Maybe you're seeing a little bit more nitrate and phosphate than you would like. Soft corals, generally speaking, they don't mind that as much as say a stony coral where you might start to see some algae growth on the skeleton, for example. Speaking of skeleton, they don't really have one. Sure, there's like some spicules and things like that that might be calcium based, but compared to the calcium alkalinity, magnesium requirements for even some basic stony corals, they're not really that comparable. Keep up with your water changes and you're good. You don't really have to worry about having a calcium reactor, about dosing, anything like that. It's pretty straightforward. Many soft corals are also great candidates for propagation. So if you were looking to try your hand at aquaculture, you can kind of safely do that with many of these soft corals. Now, some of the suggestions that I'm gonna make are for corals that kind of have a reputation for growing rampant. And I was considering not including them on this list, but then I was thinking, who am I to say that somebody doesn't have a larger tank? After all, I actually recommend having a larger tank for beginners. Okay, so the first coral I'm gonna recommend are mushrooms, and specifically mushrooms uh, from the genus Rhodactis and from the genus Discosoma. These two are typically the most hardy. I kind of hesitate to throw Recordia in there because Recordia yuma can tend to be a little bit fragile. Recordia florida might be a little bit hard to get right now, but Rhodactis and Discosoma, they come in a huge variety of colors, and these two genera of mushrooms are known to be very hardy. Also, these two types of mushrooms encapsulate the entire price range of corals. So it's not like you're saying, oh, buy these cheap corals and one day you'll just regret ever owning them. If you want, you can get into some collector class mushrooms that are gonna be extremely expensive. Bounce mushrooms are a type of redactus. Jawbreaker uh, discosoma, those are obviously a type, of, a type of mushroom you can spend a lot of money on. Again, don't feel like you're gonna get into this and, and just be kind of stuck in, in sh and shunned into some little noob corner just because you're having mushrooms. That's just simply not the case anymore. Some of the most uh, highly sought after corals right now as of you know, 2018 are gonna be mushrooms. All right, number two are gonna be leather corals. And I'm not really gonna differentiate all the different types of leathers. I mean, there's Kenya trees, there's sarcophyton, toad, those big toadstools, there's lobophytums, like the devil's hands, all different types. Um, even like the branching guides, the cinularias, the nephthias. I'm kind of lumping them all into different types of leather corals you can consider. The thing I like about leather corals is not so much their color because their color tends to be fairly limited, especially you know compared to the other suggestions on this list. But what I do like is their shape and their impressive size and the way that they move. People um, like corals such as frog spawn, torches, hammers, because they provide that movement. Well, 
leather corals can provide a similar movement. One thing to note about leathers, they have this reputation for being toxic. It's true. Leathers do release a toxin in the water as a form of kind of chemical warfare, especially against stony corals. These chemicals in the water will inhibit the growth, or at least the growth rate of the nearby stony corals that will allow then the leathers to conquer more land on the reef. Practically speaking though, it's not as big of an issue as you might think. In fact, I have a tank that the entire top portion of it is all Acropora and other SPS. And the entire lower portion are giant leathers. And we're not really seeing too much in the way of muted colors or slow growth or anything. If you happen to have leather corals in your tank, it does not preclude you from having stony corals. It just, in practice, it doesn't pan out that way. So I, I don't think it's as big of a risk as people make it out to be. Number three. Zoanthids. And I'll throw Paleothoa in there as well. The nice thing about Zoanthids and Paleothoa is you get pretty much access to the, the entire palette of coloration and patterns. They are fast growing, they're easy to take care of, and especially if you can feed them, they, then they become very, very easy to take care of. There's always that risk of palytoxin, very uncommon. You have to be kind of doing some special things to, to get palytoxin poisoning. If you're really concerned, you can always take more precautions. Personally, palytoxin isn't something that would prevent me from owning zoanthids, obviously. So, to each their own. Number four, star polyps. So star polyps are kind of that quintessential beginner's coral. It's a fast growing mat. There's a neon green variety that fluoresces intensely. They're pretty inexpensive to get into. And the only care tip that I have to add is that they do very well in very strong flow. So if you're able to provide some, some good water movement around them just to kind of keep detritus from settling on them, or even just growing them directly vertically against uh, like something like an overflow box or something, or the back wall of your aquarium, they'll do very nicely. It seems to that that uh, detritus kind of stymies their growth a little bit. Green star polyps, definitely a good choice for beginners. Lastly, number five, Xenia. So they have this reputation for being a beginner noob coral. So obviously this is a video for beginners. The problem that people run into sometimes is that they get into like plague proportions. But again, um, if you have a smaller tank, you might want to reconsider. But then again, you can always prune them back. It's not a difficult thing to do. Having said that, clearly the best selling coral we've ev we ever sell on Tidal Gardens are Xenia. So whatever aspersions that people might cast on Xenia, it doesn't really pan out when it comes to buying behavior, let's just say. People love Xenia. One of my favorite elements of Xenia is that unique pulsing motion. There's very few corals that have that type of motion to them. Most hobbies will find Xenia very easy to keep. About 80 to 90% of the time, they grow rampant. About 10-ish percent of the time, for whatever reason, they just don't do well kind of can't really put my finger on it because sometimes people say like, oh, it's because the water's too clean or maybe the water's too dirty. I've seen Xenia do very well in both. The only time I've ever seen Xenia do something truly weird was when I saw somebody's ultra low nutrient system where the Xenia shrunk down to about like one, f to like one fifth of their normal size. And then I was thinking, okay, that's probably too clean for them. But I would say that the vast majority of tanks out there can keep Xenia just fine. And if they're growing into plague proportions, honestly, you're kind of doing something right. And you can graduate onto more advanced corals if you would like. Okay, so that was just a quick overview of the five beginner corals, at least that I personally would recommend. We went over mushrooms, leathers, zoas, star polyps, and Xenia. All right, guys. If you like this topic and would like to know more, I invite you to leave a comment below where we can all continue the discussion. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell 
because I'll be adding more videos like this in the future. I'll be following this up with beginner coral suggestions for stony corals, even SPS. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and happy reefing. Cat is nuts.